In the previous screencasts we were looking at how to start SecureCAD, look at the example model and run a simulation. We were also looking at the high level simulation results coming from the SecureCAD Community Edition report. And in this screencast I will show the attack paths or critical paths created and used by the attack simulations. We start by looking at the simulation results once again. And here we have the report we have seen. And to the far right of the high value assets table we see that we have icons under the label critical path. Clicking on these will show the critical path or actually the attack path for this particular object. Now these bubbles floating around here are representing different attack steps that are involved in going from one position in our model to the next one. And if I rearrange these a bit for clarity then we can see what different operations an attacker is expected to use between the different objects. So we have the attacker entry point here where we said that okay the attacker is starting with a foothold or a starting point in the first workstation here. That gives possibility to use clients installed on this machine which in turn gives access to a an allowed data flow to another service but in parallel since the attacker is administrator or root on this machine it can read the ELSAS or the local key store uh, but that is dependent on if the defense encrypted is enabled or not. So there is a probability that the attacker can read this local key store and extract an administrator uh, user account and that user account might fit into an access control that in turn fit in the next RDP service here and if this RDP service happens to be running as super user which is often the case then uh, the attacker will gain uh, administrative access to this next machine which is the stage SRV1 and that automatically gives access to the next network zone here. And then if we return to the network architecture map of the example model we were looking at we see that we have actually been going from workstation number one to staging SRV2 using a data flow. We can also see that the attacker didn't have to hack any firewall because it was uh, using already allowed communication between the network zones. So what we see here is that like an attacker or a penetration tester for that matter, uh, for each achievement or step that an attacker can do or succeed with, uh, it will take a fresh look around to see, okay, what can I do next? What can I do next? And so on. And when reaching this next network zone, it will uh, take a, a new look around to see, if, uh, are there any other services that I can connect to? And are they updated? Are they possible to log into? And so on. Now, this track is the chain of hacker events or hacker operations that the simulations have found to be the most likely one or the fastest one or the easiest to perform. Now it's not the only possible. If we look at the rest of this map here we see that there are other options for going to the rest of this uh, architecture. And even though brute forcing this uh, administrator user account, because there might be weak passwords involved, is the most likely track to use for reaching this uh, stage SRV2. We can see here under detail level that there is a lever 
we can uh, use. And the label here says increase the detail level to see alternate paths. And if we move this one to the right, we shall see that, well, there's another user that you can guess a username from or obtain credentials from, depending on the security awareness, apparently. We can zoom in here to see that. And we also see that multi-factor authentication could help in this case. If I zoom back out, what I want to show is that if we continue to increase the level, showing more alternative attack pots, we see that something else is showing up here. And that is a more classical hacker track, or I wouldn't say classic, but anyway. It is about deploying an exploit and finding an exploit and this is due to the fact that this RDP service might not be completely patched. Now this attack path was for going from the attacker entry point to the stage SRV2 com uh, compromise which was the midway high value asset in our architecture. Then we can go back to the report and we can go down to the next high value asset which will take us further down the architecture and here we see that okay uh, there's a lot of new uh, options or new attack steps that the attacker need to accomplish to reach the goal because the customer record is further down the architecture and here we can see that if we increase the level of detail we have more of this phenomena that there are alternative attack paths that could possibly be an option for the attacker. Bypass SSH and reading a key store again and so on. And finally compromising the Oracle database service here. So one obvious question is of course how do you use this? Well, apart from this being uh, very cool and nerdy and uh, groovy in many ways, uh, there are some uh, powerful use cases for when you can get really good information out of this. To start with, since we are looking at uh, the most likely chain of attack operations, you can say that uh, if you could block the attacker in uh, some of these uh, different attack steps, it would require the attacker to uh, pursue another track or do another set of operations which will take more time and effort. You could also use this for uh, like system reviews. So suppose that you are responsible for this prod SRV2 machine, then you can verify is it really possible to log into this SSHD because the it is possible to find uh, root logins because of weak credentials or weak passwords that are machine guessable. It is also possible to verify is it really the case that uh, this SSHD service uh, actually has got a known vulnerability out there. A similar use case would be to run these uh, simulations while you are designing a new solution or a new system or an integration between two uh, applications. And then you can see what the different uh, expected attack paths would be for different design alternatives. We have also experienced that uh, this is a rather good way to incorporate the uh, security mindset into a development process. Now, finally, what I want to comment around this attack path map is the arrows. Thick arrows indicates that a certain attack step or jump in the architecture is important to the attacker. So this means that there are not many parallel alternatives uh, available to the attacker. Um, thin lines have several options. Red lines are uh, 
indicating that uh, an attack step is uh, quite easy to achieve, doesn't cost that much time, while these orange or yellow uh, arrows indicate that there are attack steps uh, involved here uh, that would require more effort. So that concludes my explanation of the critical path or the attack map and next I will talk about the choke points.